powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Well, good morning. Thanks for waking up with us today. I'm Justine Stewart. And I'm Louis Storch. Hope you're having a great start to your Monday. Always kind of tough to get back after a <sighs> weekend, Justine. And, and warm your car up pretty yeah. good this morning because it's kind of a rude awakening when you step outside. Oh, yeah. No, you're going to want to get outside, spend some extra time in allowing that thing to warm up because <laughs> we're seeing low temperatures right now, anywhere from the single digits to below zero. Yeah. Wind chill values well below zero. It's going to be cold today. If there is good news, though, like I mentioned, we're going to see a lot of sunshine for today. There so there you have it. That is some good news there. Here's your Monday forecast. 24 in Missoula today. 22 Kalispell. 25 Hamilton. 22 in Polson. So well below average temperatures for our highs. Now, southwest Montana, notice Hamilton. We could see some clouds during the morning time, but then skies clearing, leading to a lot of sunshine as we get later on into the day and pushing into the afternoon. Now, here's your forecast headlines that we are going to be watching this week. So quiet today and tomorrow. Today, highs, like I mentioned, teens and 20s. Tomorrow, highs in the 20s and 30s. Snow moves in Wednesday. Significant mountain snow possible. Valleys could pick up several inches and staying active with snow and rain Thursday, Friday into Saturday. Then we're tracking another strong system potentially moving in by Sunday. So I'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. A train fire in Clinton became a public threat after first responders were left with a decision whether or not to evacuate the city since the train was carrying oil tankers. Crews were able to separate the flaming engine from the rest of the train, but as MTN's Dono Lakatua says, nearby residents were still concerned. Clinton residents are thanking volunteer rural firefighters for a quick response, which could have led to the evacuation of the town. I came around the corner and I just saw the big uh, flame sticking up from the exhaust. So I actually turned around and went back to the school in case there was an explosion. I just thought this, is, this could be ugly. Jeff Rittenauer and his family live directly across the tracks where flames were shooting out of the top of the engine car. Emergency responders arrived on the scene just after 4 p.m. on Sunday and realized the train was carrying oil tankers. Clinton Rural Fire Chief said unless crews could separate the cars from the engine, they were preparing to evacuate the town of Clinton. We might not have even had enough water to put out an engine fire, but our priority would have been getting the Clinton people out. But judging by the distance between the track and the houses, it really would have been a, you know, an inconvenience for the homeowners, but uh, something we were evaluating. Crews maintained distance from the fire while trying to suppress the flames, and Montana Rail Link was able to detach the oil tankers from the engine, which made an evacuation unnecessary. Initially, flames were judged to be 15 feet high. Engine is attached to an oil tanker car. Multiple oil cars were told they're empty. MRL was already on scene upon our arrival. We deployed hose, we sprayed water on the car behind the engine and the fire slowly burned itself out. We never did put any water on the engine itself, mostly because we didn't want to get too close. There were no injuries reported. MRL dispatched an investigator to determine the cause of the ignition, while crews stayed on scene to monitor temperatures. There were no injuries reported. Stay with KPAX online and on air. We'll keep you updated as more information becomes available. Now back to you. Montana's expanded Medicaid program must be renewed in state law next year to continue covering thousands of low-income Montanas. MTN's Mike Dennison is reporting that supporters of the program are discussing whether to have a voter initiative this year to extend the expansion past 2019. Montana's Medicaid expansion currently provides basically free health coverage to 91,000 low-income people across the state. But the program is set to expire in June 2019, unless the legislature votes to extend it. Some of its supporters, however, worry the 2019 legislature may not do that, so they're mulling whether to run a ballot measure this year asking voters to approve the extension. State Senator Ed Buttery of Great Falls sponsored the bill in 2015 that authorized Medicaid expansion in Montana. He told MTN News the ballot measure could include reforms of the program and direct lawmakers how to pay for Montana's share of the cost, as much as $150 to $200 million in 2020 and 2021. But he also says no decision has been made on whether to pursue an initiative or what it would contain. The federal government will pay 90% of the program costs as of 2020. The program is bringing in more than $1 billion of federal money into Montana this year and next. Buttery says he'd like to see health care providers, health insurers, and some of those covered by the program help pay the state's share. 
Those discussing a possible ballot measure include hospital officials, health care groups, low-income advocates, and Governor Steve Bullock's office. When asked this week about whether he'd support an initiative to extend Medicaid expansion, Bullock would say only that he's had discussions with people about extending the program. If supporters want to qualify the measure for the November ballot, they'll have to act quickly. They need the signatures of at least 25,468 registered voters, and they must turn those in by June 22nd. Mike Dennison, MTN News, Helena. Frenchtown residents should prepare for a summer of road construction. The Montana Department of Transportation is beginning work on improving an 11-mile stretch on the Frenchtown Frontage Road. This frontage reconstruction is part of a greater project to increase the connectivity between Frenchtown and Houston. According to MDT engineer Shane Stack, the new roadway will still prioritize the foot and bike path. The project will include a shared use path for the entire length of the project, so the non-motorized folks will be accommodated. The roadway surface has had been deteriorating over the last few years uh, to the point where uh, it needed to be reconstructed. It's already essentially started with uh, utility relocates, uh, the notice to proceed has been given to the contractor. The road is expected to cost between 12 and 13 million dollars, all of which come from state and federal gas tax. The project is set to begin March 1st. Race to the Sky Montana hit their 33rd year dog sled race in Lincoln, Montana. MTN's Lindsay Ford spoke with a couple of competitors about how they got into the sport. On Saturday, the sun was out with a great number of people excited to see some dog sledding. Race to the Sky Montana dog sled race held 21 competitors for 2018, coming from different towns in Montana and other states. Lori Warren from Idaho says she's been racing for six years and got into dog sledding because of her eldest son. So I would go to the races with him and help him out and sit in the truck a lot and drum my fingers and wait for him. And they had some dogs that weren't doing well for him. And I decided, well, instead of sitting here, I'll just go run their dogs a little bit. Warren is competing in the 300-mile adult race. Trevor, my youngest son, encouraged me to run a race, and I just was addicted. I really, really enjoy it. I love working with the dogs. I love being outside. There's nothing better than being up in the mountains where you can't get otherwise with your best friends. Before the race, some mushers wrap their dogs' paws to protect them from cuts and ice packed in between. Charmaine Morrison from Polson, Montana, competed in the 100-mile junior race. Morrison got into dog sledding because of a school project. She built a sled, started off with three dogs, and then expanded to 17 Alaskan Huskies. I think my favorite part is just being the connection with the dogs and having you know a bond with each and every one of them. And they're, you know, kind of my family, extended family, I guess. Morrison's been mushing for five seasons, and this is her second year racing. Morrison said her friends and family were surprised that she took on this sport. And it's definitely taken a little getting used to. I've uh, never been a big dog family, but now we are, so. Travis Schweigert, Charmaine's father, said it's been great to help his daughter with her passion of dog sledding. I am very proud of her, and it's, it's fun seeing her excel. No! Mushers will be traveling to Avando and Sealy Lake for the 100 mile finish and 300 milers will continue back through Avando and finish at High Country Snack Foods near Lincoln. Okay, so I'm here with the Barrington family and they're here with their kids and some of their grandkids and um, yeah, so are you guys uh, excited about today? Or? Yeah, it's been a blast. We came up just to support friends and we didn't expect it to be quite so fun, but it's been great. It's cool to watch the dogs and just see them, how excited they get right before they start running. That part's really cool. Lindsay Ford, MTN News, Lincoln. Well, good morning, everyone. Hope you all are having a great start to your Monday. Uh, let's take a quick look outside of some of the pictures that were sent into us over the weekend as we had a really nice weekend, at least on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we had uh, some cooler temperatures and the winds really picked up in the afternoon. But how about this great picture sent into us by Mindy? I know it's tough to see, but if you look closely there in the background, you can see several elk sitting there at the background there. So Cindy, thank you so much for this picture right here. And then one more. This was sent into us by Jardy. This is overlooking Missoula. There's Mount Jumbo right there, snow covered with the snow on the mountains in the background. So everyone, thanks for all the pictures. And again, we have a lot to get into. And we'll do it as we move throughout the morning. Here's some temperatures right now across western Montana. Eight in Missoula. We're at 10 in Hamilton. Eight Sula. 20 in Salmon. Three below right now in Phillipsburg. The number right now isn't coming in on Sealy Lake. I just looked though, it's about 14 degrees below zero in Sealy Lake. Five Kalispell, 11 Polson, 18 Thompson Falls. 
We we're at eight this morning waking up in St. Regis. All right, so what I want to do now is go ahead and time out the next several days for you here using our jet stream forecast. So what we're going to look at is when our next systems are moving through and then also what our temperatures are going to do. So notice the big dip in the jet stream today. Cold air moving in from Canada. That's why we're going to see really cold temperatures highs only in the teens and 20s. We're going to slightly warm it up for tomorrow. We stopped this 1230 on Tuesday. Notice has those blue temperatures and move further off to the north. So we are going to bring in warmer temperatures on Tuesday. Tuesday. Highs making it back up into the 30s. Then watch as another round of Arctic air builds in by Wednesday and Thursday. So out in front of this, this is when we're going to bring in the snow showers on Wednesday. Thursday, temperatures dropping back down into the 20s and low 30s for highs. After Thursday, off and on light scattered rain showers, even some snow showers as we are going to see a little bit of a warming trend on Saturday. But then watch what happens as we move into Sunday. Another round of Arctic air begins to move in. So we're looking at snow showers returning on Sunday. And then the extended forecast shows these cold temperatures could stick around through next week. So just be prepared for some colder weather to move in after, yeah, we know it was a bit warmer last week. So here's your seven day forecast for Missoula 24 today, 35 Tuesday. There we go. Snow moves in on Wednesday. Kalispell 22 today, 30 Tuesday, 33 Wednesday, 28 by Thursday in Hamilton, 25 today, 38 Tuesday and Wednesday, and then back into the lower 30s on Thursday. It certainly did change it up this week, didn't it? Yeah, so after, you know, those warmer temperatures last week, and then looking at the extended, Justine, looks like especially rolling into next week, we get some another round of several blasts of Arctic air rolling oh, through. Wow, all right. Well, thanks, Lewis, and make sure you do stick around because we'll be right back after this. But first, here are some birthday shout-outs for you this morning.